Welcome back to Southwest Yard and Garden. Rick Daniel, Bernalillo County Horticulture Agent, is going to help us answer some of the questions that New Mexico gardeners have. What do we have here, Rick? Well, first thing I wanted to show you is this, this squash leaf. Uh, you'll notice there's a lot of kind of grayish or whitish looking spots on it. A lot of people wonder, well, is there something wrong with that leaf? Is that powdery mildew? What's the answer to that? The answer is that's the way that squash leaf looks. Uh, not all squash leaves are solid green, so that's just normal in some types of squash. Right. Now, powdery mildew could show up if it rubs off then it may be powdery mildew. That's and that one rubbed a little bit, but that's just a waxy coating that's on that part of the leaf. Right, so this is just a, a normal thing with that leaf. And normal, no disease. No disease. Now, how about this? Is this a disease? Ah, uh, well, this is kind of a disease. <laughs> this is uh, blossom end rot. Uh, we see it a lot in tomatoes, uh, various other fruits, uh, chilies, squash, uh, melons. One of the problems we have with our climate around here is we have a real hot climate in June. That's the time when these plants are growing really quickly. Um, and they're also beginning to form their fruit during that they're, time. They're beginning to form their fruit. As, as the plants take up water, they're pulling calcium up through there. This is caused from a calcium deficiency in the fruit. But here in New Mexico, we've got lots of calcium. That's right. There's a lot of calcium in there. What happens is these plants pull this water up and the calcium. Uh, they transpire through the leaves. A lot of times the fruit gets bypassed. Uh, so, so during that time of lush green growth, when you have a lot of vegetative growth, the fruits miss out on the calcium, and that's why you'll end up with this, this deficiency in whether it be tomatoes or whatever. It's, it, a lot of it's due to uneven watering. You need to make sure you have plenty of water so that calcium can be pulled up through there. Sometimes a mulch or something will help uh, prevent that, um, but that's, that's a real common problem. You'll see it whenever you start getting those first fruits on a lot of, lot of different things. As you said, Rick, this shows up in the early part of the crop because that's when the plant is vigorously growing, but beginning to set the fruit. It needs that calcium in the fruit then because the calcium glues the cells together. And a little tiny that's fruit right. is just forming. It glues it together. So as they enlarge, it stays together. But without the calcium, this happens. That's right. And what happens then when you fertilize? When you fertilize, you know, a lot of times you can over fertilize and cause this excess growth and cause, you know, more problems for yourself. And so just, you know, you've got to you've got to deal with the plants growing at a certain rate and not push them too much. What we want to do is not aggravate it, but uh, fertilize when they're very young, get them growing. That's but right. When they start setting fruit, we want to back off on that fertilization That's or right. accept the increased blossom end rot problems that we've got That's and just right. remove them. And we see it on tomato, as you mentioned, chili. Right. Got a squash. Right. But this isn't blossom end rot on this cucumber. No, th this one's a little bit different. You notice it's not on the blossom end there. It's on the side. Uh, it's the white color, that's just sun scald, and a lot of that can be caused just from our intense sun. Uh, it may, may not have been shaded good enough by the foliage of the plant or something. Uh, that's another problem you'll see pretty commonly uh, in New Mexico, in our mm -hmm. area. A lot of people will find it on a tomato, and, but they'll find it on the shoulder. Right. If it's on this end, it's not blossom end rot, because that's the shaded part. Right. So it, this is uh, blossom end rot on the end, right. but shaded on the shoulder. That's right. And uh, if it's not shaded here, if it's sitting out in the sun, the sun's shining on it, it burns it. That's right. So don't confuse blossom end rot and sun scald. They're different problems. They have different solutions. Okay. There's a couple other problems or a couple other things that we have here. We have some tomatoes over here. And you'll notice uh, there might be a few cracks on some of them. Why don't you explain to me a little bit why, why that happens? I think it's important to show this even happens up here in the northern part of the state. This has been discussed in the south. Okay. But we have the same problem here. As it's growing, we reach a dry spell. It begins to harden up. Then we get a good rain or we irrigate. It begins to swell again, but the skin has toughened up and it splits. Okay. So this is due to uneven watering. Okay. Finally, we have a, a big squash here. <laughs> a lot of times people will, will want to save the seeds and stuff on these these uh, fruits. What's your comment on that? Uh, it depends on what you're doing. First, if you're growing hybrids, if you bought a package of hybrid seed, okay. it is not going to come back to be what you planted in the first place. Now, it may be fun to see what happens because you get all kinds of interesting things that came out of it. I've done that on purpose. In fact, I've got right. squash in my garden this year, which I've got beautiful crookneck squash, some straight squash, and I've got something that thinks it wants to be a pumpkin. All came from the same seed a year ago, and I just saved the seed, planted them back to see what I would get. So I get some interesting things. Some of them aren't as good, though. If you buy hybrids, you're buying something that's meant to be a hybrid. It's supposed to grow fast. It has the benefits of being a hybrid, and it's a known variety. 
And if you plant the seed back from it, you get a very much unknown factor. And here in this garden, there are a lot of other types of squash. If you've got crooknecks and pumpkins, uh, zucchinis, and yellow zucchinis all growing together, they can be cross-pollinated. So now, even if it's not a hybrid, you've got pollen from different types mixed in. So the next year, you're going to have some very unusual effects from the seed. It's fun to grow it if you've got the room. But if you want to have what you want, you've got to buy the seed and plant those seeds. And I think that's real important for people to know because a lot of times people just forget about that, that concept and uh, will be surprised whenever they start seeing their, their plants and their fruit. I'm having fun watching that pumpkin kind of thing growing in my garden this year.